Okay. Suppose if I put the following up. Is it true or false? Let's entertain the thought. One and one equals two. Is that correct? Of course. How about one plus three equals four? Is that correct? Of course it is. What about this? One and one equals one. Is that wrong? Actually, it's right. However, in my first version, the fact that we call it one and one instead of one plus one threw off a little something I taught you initially. This statement is actually correct. In the world of Boolean algebra. And what I was saying is, this is actually known as OR logic. In my original video, I thought it was AND. I haven't done this stuff literally in 15 years, so this kind of slipped my mind a little bit. I thought it was a symbol for AND, because if you do regular math, 1 AND 1 is 2. But in actuality, this stands for OR. 1 OR 1 equals 1. So, yes, this statement is actually true. And we'll go over a little bit of OR logic for you. It's a simple condition where if you have any true event, in this case represented by a 1, the outcome will also be true, which equals 1. In a lot of cases, to represent true or correct, usually the number 1 is used. False, wrong, off, on for true, by the way. Typically, a zero is used. It just makes things a little more simplified. And I lost my eraser. Normally, I would edit these videos, but, oh, there it is. I'm brave enough to actually show you that yes, I am human and humans make mistakes. However, all that all that stuff was indeed correct. Just figure out where I put my eraser. It's another thing. So with that being said, one or one equals one. It doesn't even matter how many how many conditions you have. Yada, 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 it equals 1. Now, in the world of OR logic, you only need one thing to be true on correct to satisfy the event. For example, let's say you want a really fancy car. Yes, you got to love my really ultra-quick drawings here. But you don't want any car. You want a fancy car, whether it's a Cadillac, BMW, it doesn't matter what. You just want something super pricey. However, however, 
you don't have any money. Not the lack. There. So, how can someone with no money get a really fancy, fancy, schmancy car? This is my really poor ass version of a of explaining or logic to you. Perhaps you have uh, somebody who's really rich in the family and they'll give you money to buy a new car. So you have no money but you definitely have somebody rich in your family And in this case, since you're relying on him, let's say you don't have a trade-in. The end result is, because you have a rich uncle, you can get yourself that fancy new car. But what if that uncle didn't exist? Uh-oh. Looks like you can't get that car. But wait a minute. Maybe somebody gave you, maybe somebody gave you a really old fancy car. This one happens to also be very valuable. Perhaps then you got a very valuable trade in and maybe you do have enough money to make up the difference. Let's just say for the sake of fact that you do or that this is so, such a high-end thing, like a Porsche or a Bentley, you could go for your BMW or whatever. There you go, you satisfy the equation. The rich uncle or a trade-in will give you this. Okay, what happens if you, what happens if you work in some fancy schmancy job that pays you Lots of money. If you make a lot of money, obviously, if you want to buy a really fancy car, you could. Here's that or condition again. Perhaps again, you get the rich uncle with the money. That or family. You, it still comes out as one. What if you have the rich uncle who's willing to flip the difference, flip the difference, shall I say, and you trade in this really fancy car with his money and you work a good job and you can get a really, really expensive car. You or your family or trade-in or any combination thereof and everything makes the statement true. So that's or logic in a ultra basic nutshell. Very basic in a really ultra crappy way. As always, feel free to leave comments, but remember they require approval. Let's look at the truth table in this situation. Okay, this would represent you, this would be that uncle, and this would be that fancy trade-in. Obviously, I'm not spending a lot of time making things look pretty for you, okay? I might have even drawn too many lines for you. And this is the outcome. If you have no money, and your family has no money, and you don't have a good trade-in, obviously you're not going to be able to get a car that's really fancy, or even a car in general. Now, you can substitute that rich uncle for a family, a friend, well, anybody. If you got a good trade-in and a really good trade-in, chances are the outcome is you can get that fancy car. And let me just make this line a little fatter, just so we have a definite break. And I might have to add more here. 
Same thing, rich uncle, but no trade-in. You can do it. Maybe you have a ton of money, you can do it yourself. Those are zeros, obviously. Like I, like I said, I'm chicken scratching. Of course, any combination thereof. Have money, get a good trade-in, it helps you just that much more. Maybe you got that rich family member, no trade-in, but you make a lot of money, sure you can. And of course, if you have all three, you'd be, uh, you'd have one hell of a ride that would make everybody jealous of you. So in the land of ore, any, any case being true and result is true. Now this is the exact opposite of and logic, which I did in the other video, where I'll just go over very quickly where all has to be true to be true. He said, I'm going to do this very quickly here. So in this case, you don't have money. You have a trade in. And that rich uncle. In this case, you would need this and this plus you to have a lot of money to get that ultra, that ultra huge car that you might like. For example, you don't have the money, you got a decent trade in and your uncle's broke. Nope, you can't get it. Suppose you had the money and you had the car, but your uncle has more money so that you could actually afford something ridiculously pricey like a stretch limo. Nope, you probably can't afford it. Now, in terms of the trading, we're still talking, you know, your luxury cars like a Cadillac or a Lexus. Not really high end here. Of course, if none of you had it, of course it won't work. If your uncle is rich and you don't have anything, sorry. And we'll skip all the other things. If you have the big money, a really good trade in, and you got a lot of money, you probably will be able to get that super stretch limo costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars. That is and where one and one in that particular case and one equals one. See how I kind of confused it? Because when we usually use and, use it in regular mathematics, one and one would be like one plus one. That's how I screwed up that first video. But the whole purpose of this video was to simply prove in a roundabout way that this can be a true statement. I know it's kind of roundabout and I'm not the best lecturer on the planet, so you're going to have to deal with the cards that I dealt you, unfortunately. So, that is how this statement can be true, even though it might not look, it might not even look it, as well as that, or that, you get the idea.
So yes, when you see that statement, someone's probably not nuts. They're probably thinking Boolean algebra. That's all I have. Hope you enjoyed, and maybe you might have got something out of it. Probably not.